Member FDIC. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Nothing strikes a deeper chill to the heart than the maniac at loose, who strikes without reason and without warning. The creature of murderous whim who stalks the night, who repeats his odious crimes at random, and who, by the very purposelessness of his actions, evades the law and punishment. This story is about such a man. As true a candidate for the Hall of Ill Fame as Jack the Ripper or the Boston Strangler. Sergeant, where the Sam Hill is Detective Renzoli? Hasn't he gotten back in that code too yet? Uh, hi, hi, Lieutenant. Oh, Tony, you're back. What did you get? A uh, female Caucasian height of... Never mind the vital statistics. Did you get a make? Well, proceeding on instructions to the scene of the crime... Tony, the perpetrator just has make... speak English. Is it another one? Yeah, Lieutenant. Just a torso, I call the rest. She didn't have any head. Our mystery drama, The Trouble with Murder, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Robert Morse. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and... Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Ever see a beer drinker pour his beer real easy down the side of the glass? Maybe you do it yourself. If so, the Budweiser Brewmaster thinks you're missing something, especially if you're a Budweiser drinker. You see, Bud is brewed, so it will kick up a healthy head of foam. Exclusive beechwood aging and natural carbonation make it a lively brew. Well, anyway, pouring Bud plunk down the middle of the glass helps bring out the best in that clean white Budweiser foam and real beer aroma. It also helps you get the full benefit of a taste, smoothness, and drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. Remember, brewing beer right does make a difference. Next time, pour that Budweiser right down the middle and see for yourself. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Shop at Margie's. Calling all juniors, get ready for action at Margie's with the greatest looking famous name fashion pants, just $9. And complete the look with the newest shirts and all kinds of sweaters, cardigans, vests, pullovers, and more. Just 5 to $9. So hurry, get into the action. Shirts and sweaters, just 5 to $9. And fashion pants, just $9. Starting this Friday at all Margie's. Shop Margie's, Margie's The football season really arrives in the Metroplex this weekend. Here are five games on KRLD in three days. The high school game of the week Friday night, Texas A&M Clemson Saturday afternoon, SMU North Texas State Saturday night, the Cowboys in Atlanta on Sunday, and cap it off with Oakland and Buffalo on Monday night football. Hear it all on KRLD, sports voice of the great Southwest. prompts a human being to commit a senseless and savage crime. The reasons are as many and varied as the human brain is capable of conceiving. In the case of the Brooklyn headhunter, as he came to be known, at least two motives were ruled out. The girls had not been assaulted, and robbery appeared unlikely since although the torsos were nude, all of them wore either rings or earrings of some considerable value. And by all odds, the most tantalizing question of all was, since the bodies kept being recovered, where were the heads? This dingling is going to be a surgeon or at least a medical student, the way the heads are. Well, whoever he is, we've got to find him. Excuse me, Lieutenant. What? 
My name is Hugo Mintner, a, a citizen. I want to make a complaint. Would you mind seeing the sergeant sitting at the desk, citizen? I'm talking police business to the detective. I, I want to talk police business, too. Look, Mr. No, Hugo, Hugo Mintner. All right, now, Mr. Mintner. No, 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 with an N. What? Mintner, not Minter. She was an actress in the silent films. Mary Miles. Oh, some days it don't pay to get up. But whatever your name is, why don't you take your complaint to the sergeant? Because in my experience, Sergeant Danielson never listens to or takes any actions on my complaints. Nor does Sergeant Brader or Sergeant Fryhouse or the one with uh, ulcers who never gives out his name. Uh... You've been here before. Naturally. A chronic complainer, a repeater. Well, what is it you complain about, Mr. Mitner? Uh, citizen? Well, various things. Uh, tonight, it happens to be acid rock. You don't like rock? Not when it's loud enough to split the eardrum. Your neighbors are playing music too loud. Knock on the wall. The reaction is only to turn it up further. Where do you live, mister? Well, uh, Columbia Heights. Now, what do you do for a living? I'm an artist. Unemployed, huh? On the contrary. I work for Saw Yard Studios as a draftsman on graphics and cartoon figures. And for a living, too. Okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. You go to the desk, swear out your complaint, and I promise you, once I'm through with the detective here... Uh, I suppose it's really hopeless to get the police to pay proper attention to me. I know the moment I'm out of sight, I'll be out of mind. <laughs> you ain't kidding, darling. Okay, Tony, now we've got him out of here, let's get down to the real problem. I've got to get the boys upstairs off my back about this headhunter. Now, let's hope this time we can get a lead that at least might start us on the way to finding out who he is. That's what makes it so very difficult with the police. They just are not personally interested in my problems. It's really what started it all in the in the beginning. And of course, by now, it's all gotten quite out of hand. If I'd only gone to them a year ago. Ah, but you see, they never pay any attention to me. They never have. And that's what stopped me uh, from going to the police. Not from what has just happened again. So here I am, having to make an extra visit, besides my regular weekly one, to Aunt Minerva in Flatbush. Oh, hush up, Rosebud. Well, Mrs. Hoffman, I'm afraid I'm giving you a card you want. Mm, that will be the day. For we with over half the pack gone, I should load up with a king. Here. Oh, that's very generous of you, Mrs. Copperman. Hmm. Gin. What is the card you turned over? I knew it. That was my gin card. Oh, who could that be? Let me just peek who it is. Oh, sakes alive, it's Hugo. On a Thursday. That's not his day. Well, while you let your nephew in, I'll say goodnight. Oh, you don't have to run, Bernie. Oh, I would not intrude on family. Hello, Aunt Minerva. Oh, Hugo, dear boy, this is a nice surprise. How are you, Mrs. Coppelman? At my age, why complain? You brought Minnie a new pet? Oh, uh, not exactly. Excuse me, I did not mean to pry. But I see you carrying the box. See you tomorrow, Minnie. Of course, Minnie. Well, come in, come in, Hugo. Thank you, Auntie. <sighs> oh. What do you have in the pet carrier box? I hate to tell you, but... Oh, dear, not again. I'm afraid so. Oh, you are so careless with pets, Hugo. It's four cats dead already this year. That's the way the ball bounces sometimes. <laughs> I hope you're not too angry with me. Oh, of course not, you poor boy. You're so kind and gentle. That's what makes it unfortunate. You have such bad luck with pussycats. Oh, uh, you'll uh, want to bury this one out by the roses, too. If I may. Well, it, it's, it's getting a wee bit crowded, but uh, I'm sure you'll find a nice little spot. Well, the, the spade is in the lean-to, and while you're putting poor pussy to rest, I'll, I'll brew us a little tea. Get away, you! Oh, don't scold him. He just senses the presence of... Of one of his own departed. 
Oh, hush. Hush, Rosebud. What's upsetting you, you sweet boy? Oh, oh dear. His hair is all standing on end. And... Oh, Hugo, look. Look at what he has on his fur. It looks like blood. It does. You see, Auntie, I... Uh, it... It's from the box. What happened to that pussycat of yours, Hugo? She, uh, she had an accident. Oh. Oh, what sort of accident? To tell you the truth, she... She sort of lost her head. Oh, you leave your door open and your poor little cat rushes out into traffic, particularly on that busy street you live on. What do you expect? Well, well, dear, you, you'd better hurry. It's, it's getting dark. Yes, that's what I was waiting for. Quite often, like now, I mean this time... I've had this urge to confide in Auntie Minerva. I don't know. But somehow I've had the feeling that she would understand. I mean, though she's so much older, we have so many things in common. Ah, but then I think to myself, if she really knew what I have inside this box... I don't know if she'd understand any more than anyone else would. Uh, goodbye, Marilyn. You only die a little death. I will make you immortal. Come in. What do you got, Tony? Uh, this report of processing of fingerprints taken from the deceased in a torso well, murder. It's clear. Oh, sure. Like I said, this one hadn't been in the water long enough for decomposition so to set. aren't on file anywhere. Yeah, that's right. What about identifying marks? She uh, had a mole on the sole of her left foot and appendicitis scar. The doctor didn't sign his name by any chance? No, Lieutenant. Real neat job. So it's another dead end. Well, it's tough to get a make on a body that hasn't got a head. Why can't we find the other end just once? What does he do with them? Where does he get rid of the heads? Well, did you get our little friend put away all right? Oh, yes, Auntie. Oh, mm, the tea is delicious as always. Oh, well, I, I feel just a little wicked, actually. About what? Well, I couldn't resist today lacing our tea with a little rum. I think maybe I'll have another cup. Ah, well, it's, it's awfully good for the arthritis. Oh, you're not getting a tinge of that by any chance. Oh, no, no. I think I just got a, a, a little chill out there in the garden. Oh, poor boy. So sensitive. Ever since you were a child, everything affected you so. Hugo, how old are you now? Thirty-five and a half. You see... High time you settle down with a nice girl with a good sound head on her shoulders. I think I'll have another cup of oh. tea. Oh, don't forget it has rum in it. <laughs> I wasn't forgetting. Uh, I think I might join you. <laughs> it's really quite delicious. Uh, good for what ails you, as Horace used to say. So lonely with him gone all these years. A person really ought to be married. Well, a person has got to find the right girl first. That's why I thought Gloria was for you. Of course, I only met her the one time, but I really thought she'd quite lost her head over you. Whatever happened to break it off? I really would rather not talk about Gloria, if you don't mind. It was a rather, uh, well, it was a painful experience for both of us. Oh. Well, if she hurt my boy, I'm glad she's out of your life. After all this time, I suppose she is a dead issue. Oh, yes. Gloria is all of that. <laughs> you see, Auntie, I don't want you to worry about me and having a girl. And I, well, I have other things to do first. It's, well, it's too soon to tell anyone, you know, even you. But I promise you, once the secret is out, you'll be the first to know, dear Auntie. I owe you that much. <laughs> You're such a sweet boy. You don't owe me anything at all. Oh, you'd be surprised. 
I'd never have got ahead without you. Uh, that is, I mean, if, if it hadn't been for you, I'd never, never been able to get rid of Gloria. Uh, you know, shut her out of my mind and, and just got over her. And look, I, I really must go. Oh, aren't you going to stay to dinner? I'm afraid I can. Oh, well, all right, dear. I'll see you tomorrow for your regular visit. And we can have a nice long talk about Gloria. And how to find a nice new girl you can lose your head over. A person really feels terrible not to be totally honest with someone like Aunt Minnie. But there is the difference between the sexes and the generations. And then the very special circumstances that I'm involved in. It takes someone a very large vision to understand what it's all about and how it all began with Gloria. I wonder if anyone would really understand it. I mean, if I explained it right out. Jack the Ripper? The Boston Strangler? Could someone as inoffensive and humorless as Hugo Mintner join their august company? Are we faced with another Dr. Jekyll who can retrogress diabolically into Mr. Hyde and is perhaps the single most important key in our private investigation, the word humorless? I'll return very shortly with Act Two. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah? Uh, I would like to ask a deceptively simple question. Okay. I say deceptive because few people seem to know the answer. Oh, are you ready? Yeah, ready as rain. Okay. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I think that should be uh, right as rain. Oh, well. No, no, you wait, wait. Make that, make that ready as I'll ever be, okay? Yeah, well, ready as I'll ever be. What, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, the question is this. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what happens this time of year? Huh? Have the, that's it. Huh? That's the question. That's yeah. the $64,000 question. Uh, yeah. Right? I, now, that's the one. The one for all the marbles, uh, right? Well, I, hmm? that's the one that's on everybody's lips. Huh? Yes. That's the question. Well, oh, good. as everyone should know, what happens this time of year is that... Buick dealers are giving great deals on 1974 Buicks, which of course means that this time of year may very well be the best chance you'll ever have to buy a Buick. From the thrifty but surprisingly elegant Apollo to the dashing full-size LeSabre to the Electra, which surprisingly enough is the second largest selling luxury car in America. Know it all. The gardener's work is never done. Putting your plants to bed in the fall is as much work as waking them up in the spring. Hi, Frank Lieber here to tell you True Value Hardware Store stand ready to help. With a True Test 3 horsepower, 20 inch mower, for instance. It comes complete with a mulcher plate for just $79.99. True Value Hardware Stores have fall cleanup supplies too for your lawn or your flower bed. For instance, an 18 inch bamboo rake. It's lightweight and it's springy, so it does part of the work for you, just $233. And you can get a specially garden cart. Its adjustable height rim holds plastic bags open for filling. Or remove the rim and use it as a hand truck for hauling heavy bushel baskets, just $8.44. You'll find those plastic bags, too. Seven bushel cordite leaf bags. Get a package of ten for just $1.49. These lawn and garden supplies help gardeners get their work done before winter comes. They're just a few of the values at participating True Value Hardware Stores. <laughs> through the crime statistics for any major city. Just the sheer incidence of each crime. And you can wonder how any of them at all can be solved. The appalling weight of figures drowns the police departments, almost paralyzes them. Countrywide, some six million offenses. In any one of our main urban centers, an average of 40,000 for auto theft, 20,000 for robbery, over 500 for manslaughter or murder, and those are the ones reported. There are the others, like Hugo. Riding back from Flatbush in the subway, the empty pet carrier box balanced on my lap because it was crowded. The rum and the tea I'd had kept me nodding. I had to fight against falling asleep. And so I had no defense left against other memories of the past year that filled my consciousness. Most of all, Gloria. I remembered how I first 
yes, sir. Oh, excuse me. I <laughs> I didn't mean to jostle you. Oh, that's okay, John. Any port in the storm? <laughs> uh, sure is raining. Oh, my name isn't John. It's Hugo. Okay, Hugo. <laughs> right on both counts. I'll try to get a taxi. But, oh, could I drop you somewhere? Yeah. That's the uh, best you have in mind? Well. <laughs> Maybe you're for real. Okay, honey, you get the cab. You could um, drop me by my hotel. We get to my place sooner in your hotel. You like to stop off, maybe for a drink? I don't know. Dinner? You cook? Well, I studied, and I, I have an osso buco simmering. <laughs> How come you knew I was Italian? <laughs> I didn't. Are you? Oh, well, like way back, but I dig that Osobuco. So, you want to stop at my place? This weather, what can I lose? Make it your pad. Hey, you know, we got a real nice place here? It serves. It what? I, I like it, too. Are you artistic or something? I beg your pardon? All them pictures on the wall. Oh. <laughs> oh, those. Well, uh, yes. Well, those are just things I like. Um, Someday, maybe I'll have my own to hang. Oh, here's your drink. That's a Manhattan? Rye and sweet vermouth. Mm. Yeah. But rye first and then a touch of the other. Let me fix it, huh? Oh, sure, sure. I'm not very good with drinks. That's okay. Um... What are you good at, Hugo? Hmm? Well, I... I don't know. I, I never thought about it. Uh, whatever you do, do uh, you make money? Oh, uh, an adequate amount, I suppose. Uh, like, for example? Well, before take-home, taxes and all that, depending on overtime, about twenty-four, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year. Oh, that's very adequate. Well, let me try this. <laughs> that's very strong. Oh, only the first sip. <laughs> You'd be surprised how smooth it gets the next couple of times around. It doesn't seem quite as strong now. Well, keep at it. You'll like it. I already do. That's the first step. Now, how do you feel about me? Well, I liked you from the very beginning. No other ideas occurred to you? Well, I, I'd like to kiss you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Now what? Oh, do I have to tell you? She was the most marvelous thing that ever happened to me. All I could think of was the song of Solomon. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks. Thy teeth are as a flock of sheep that appear from Mount Gilead, and none barren among them. That's from the Bible. She was so beautiful. I wanted to make her immortal. In the new? Because there is nothing more beautiful than the human figure. Look, I never went that route. Dirty pictures. I know it pays good, but I... I this, this isn't dirty pictures. I... Please, I want to paint you. You... You mean like a, a centerfold in a swinger magazine? Well, something like that, but... Uh... Uh, well, you get it if you put up. Anytime little Gloria strips down for the public view, it's, it's got to be cash on the line. I suppose I should have been warned by her attitude, but she was so beautiful that I couldn't wait to do what I'd always dreamed of doing, capturing a real woman on canvas, not drawing outlines that were a caricature of the human figure, mechanically reproducing lettering or someone else's sketch, but creating by my own hand the flesh and blood and soul of a real woman. No, 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 please, don't, don't move, please. Oh, look, Hugo, I, I didn't bargain for this. I'm just about frozen stiff. These prices that don't pay. Is money all you think of? Well, what else is in this for me? I am putting an image of you on canvas that will never fade. I am making you forever immortal. Oh, sure. What magazine are you going to sell it to? Oh, you don't understand. Can't you appreciate... 
that this is real art. Only if you pay the fee, Buster. But you know I promised to pay. So right. Gloria, don't. Don't what? Don't spoil everything. Thanks a lot, Hugo, but there just isn't enough in it for me. How much do you want? I've tried to pay you as much as I can. You're kind of cute, you know. But you just don't reach where it's at. You couldn't hope to match in a week what I rake in in an average night. You mean, I don't... You're... You're a professional? <laughs> well, you're the first one ever registered a complaint. You can't do that to me. Oh, don't be silly. I made you something special. A goddess. I mean, that's the way that I painted you. Look, you want to think it's good? Okay. For me, I... I ain't all that hippie. And you, you could at least leave the bags out under my eyes. You don't appreciate real art. I think it's lousy. I tried to make you the most beautiful woman since the world began. Well, suit yourself. Just don't try to merchandise it unless I share in the proceeds. What are you talking about? Oh, look, Hugo, you hired yourself a pro. Any use you make of my body, you pay just like my regular job. I, I just can't believe... I can't believe what you're saying. Well, you better believe it. But I love you. Well, that's your problem. You mean you don't, don't return my love? It's all in the open. You just have to be kidding. The only return involved here is what I get paid if you make a big sale. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Well, you better, Hugo. You made your bed. Except I don't have to lie in it. What's your way out? I don't want to reach for it, but I won't let you walk out on me. Well, how could you stop me? Like this? Uh, uh, no, wait, you, you got... Uh, I don't want to! I don't want to! But what else can I do? Gloria? Gloria? Oh, my God! <laughs> I killed her. I didn't mean it to happen this way. The madness that came over me was terribly sudden. Without control, my hands had spanned her throat, and she was dead. In that moment, the incredible was born. It had its own inexorable logic. The body was unclothed, and even if discovered, would be hard to identify. But the head was the problem. I was grateful for all my anatomy classes. A relatively simple problem. Over the bathtub. A complex circumferal cut. Then a simple excision between the cervical and thoracic vertebrae. The body out my overhanging window in the dark before midnight into the Hudson's receding tide the severed head into the cat carrier box, the first foreign corpse to grace my Aunt Minerva's private pet cemetery. Even after the rest of Gloria was gone for good and I filled up the hole, I was shaking like a leaf. I could scarcely finish up and smooth the earth as I gave it the last little pat, I found myself saying a little eulogy. Forgive me, Gloria. I didn't mean to do it. But at least, I saved you from a life of sin. Poor Aunt Minerva. She was so concerned about me that she had something very special waiting for me when I got back to the house. A nice glass of dandelion wine. Uh, uh, sip it slowly, Hugo. Yes, Auntie. Oh, you mustn't take on so. <laughs> Poor gentle boy. All pussycats have to die sooner or later. Oh, what did you say she died of? Oh, she, she had some throat trouble. Oh, what did the veterinarian say it was? Oh, she, she died before I, uh, uh... I could get her to the vet. Oh. I'll bet it was a hairball. Yes. It can happen, you know, when yes. you're not around. Awful thing is... Probably the poor little darling just got strangled to death. I guess you might say that's exactly what happened. During the three or four days I convalesced at my apartment, 
trying to shake the shakes. I'd sit long hours looking at my portrait of Gloria. It was the first oil I'd ever painted. More and more, I became obsessed with incredible truth. I had lifted this girl from the filth and squalor of her professional life and given her an eternal life on canvas in which she would be forever beautiful and good. I had actually done her a favor. The trouble with murder is threefold. First, that driven to a rage blinding enough, anyone is capable of it. Second, that it is irrevocable. Once done, it can't be undone. And third, well, we'll consider that with Hugo when we return shortly with Act Three. Give your hand to a friend. Give your heart to your love. But give your cold to contact. The sooner the better. The common cold is a rotten thing. You miss so much. Sneezing, drips, and congestion can drag you down. Then, ask yourself the contact question. Six or three or one. You'd need six cold tablets, two every four hours, or three ounces of cold's liquid, one every four hours, or just one contact for up to 12 hours continuous relief of those symptoms. That's daytime, then nighttime relief. Both the others have things for aches and fever, and the liquid, something for coughs. Not found in contact 600 tiny time pills. Here's your call to contact. Six or three or one. Take contact. Only as directed. Oh, this dust and dirt I just cleaned yesterday. Where does it all come from? Lady, there may be a dust storm in your home every time your heating and air conditioning system cycles on. But we change our filters regularly. That's good. But you may be solving only half the problem. Dust and dirt accumulate in air conditioning and heating systems, no matter how good a housekeeper you may be. As air blows through the system, it picks up this unhealthy accumulation of dust and dirt and redistributes it throughout your home. What can be done about it? Guardian Power Cleaning has special powerful equipment that vacuums away dust and dirt from deep inside your heating and air conditioning system. Unsightly dirt is cleaned from grill work. Guardian Power Cleaning does not repair systems or sell parts. We clean away unhealthy dirt and dust from your home heating and cooling system. Today, call Guardian Power Cleaning at 637-1520. Find out how you can have a safer, cleaner, and more healthful home. It's like having your own guardian angel. Um, where were we? Oh, yes. The third trouble with murder. One that Hugo will discover for himself as our tale continues. The fact that having once committed it and gotten away with it, it becomes easier to do it again. It's like learning to play a tune on the piano, save for one thing. Practice doesn't always make perfect. If only he could have let well enough alone. So how come the favorite nephew is not making his usual visit the past two weeks, Minerva? Oh. He isn't my favorite. He's my only. Well, to tell you the truth... Pick up the card. I'm afraid he's been through an unfortunate love affair. Hmm. You mean his cat dying like that? Oh, that upset him, of course. He's a very sensitive boy. Hmm. But I'm afraid it's more than that. My trick. So I will melt. Marriage in diamonds. Marriage. I think that's just what Hugo had in mind. But apparently she... She jilted him. So maybe they're both lucky. Ask me. Marriage. It could be a fate worse than death. Are you sure she's out of the picture? Oh, yes, yes. Hugo said she just... Disappeared into thin air. <laughs> I had 
just can't disappear into thin air, Tony. Get as many men as you need, start fanning out from there inland and up and downstream, and look for that head. we got to find it. Lieutenant, the body is in the river maybe two weeks. It's too late. Have a heart. What I got running a precinct is an ulcer. Now, I want to make on that body because I've got a lousy hunch. What's that, Lieutenant? That this guy could turn out to be a repeater. Just let him get away with it once. They might be tempted to try again. After Gloria, at first I was so sick at what I'd done that I had to take a few days off from the studio. My hands would shake so much at work. I couldn't control them. But then lying in my room, looking up at my portrait of Gloria, looking so pure and chaste and like the Song of Solomon... I began to realize that I had a call. Gloria would remain forever captured in oils, innocent, immortal. I had torn her from the arms of the devil. And there were other women, the girls, misguided children who needed me as I needed them. For now, my whole life was painting. Lieutenant Flagg. What? Another one? Oh, I knew it. I could feel it in my bones. Huh? No identification. Figures. This guy's a regular bluebeard. I was a saver of souls, an instrument of immortality. And so my gallery grew to four, and my fear was all gone. It was all for their sakes. My lovely, purified girls who smiled down on me from the walls and whose remains floated in the river and fertilized my beloved auntie's roses. Come in. Hey, you looking for me, Lieutenant? Come in and close the door. Uh, yes, sir. What's the action, Lieutenant? I've been looking over the file on the Brooklyn headhunter. I don't like the going over we're getting from the press, especially after the last torso turned up. Well, how are you going to distinguish the perpetrator when we are unable to uncover the identification of the victims due to the decapolations? You should have been an actor. Now, look. Sergeant Harkins is having Central File pull the dope on every missing dame in the last year that's anywhere near the age and weight of this last torso we fished out. We struck out on the first three, but we've got a slim chance of getting a make on the fourth. Yeah. The mole on her foot and that appendix scar. Now, you are going to check personally with everyone connected with any missing dame reported in the last year. And you better find one with both those marks. I want this case closed before another one turns up. It had been a year since it all began. I felt I had done my work. And besides, Auntie was getting more and more upset about the overcrowding in her pet cemetery. Perhaps, well, I thought, as I started to fall asleep, you know, enough was enough. And yet, there was that, that one empty wall. As I drifted away, I could feel the tug of the call again. Hey, mister. Don't, don't move, please. I'm getting stiff. Can I have a smoke? No, 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 no. You're, you're almost finished. Oh, you ain't kidding. This is the coldest trick I ever turned. I must have been out of my skull when I agreed to do it. You don't realize how fortunate you are. Oh, yeah. Yes, that I found you. That I'm about to lift you up. I think you're real kinky. Hey, come on, huh? How about letting me take a break for a smoke, huh? You don't need any breaks. It's finished. Oh, you mean I can... I put my clothes on? No, no. Come here first. I want you to look at yourself. Hey. <laughs> Not bad, you know. You made me look pretty good. That was the object. You gonna hang me with all the other bait? Yes, I'm going to hang you. When you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? We are members of two of the oldest professions in the world. 
Yours, much older than mine, but very different. Yeah. I have a call to higher things, but you sold your soul to the devil. Now, hey, wait a minute, now. But have I... no fear. I have been appointed to save your soul as I save these others to make you immortal. I told Archie you were some kind of a weirdo. Now, you, you keep away from me. I can't. It's too late. Hey, You've now, been chosen. Hey, lay off, will you? Don't get excited. Now, don't lose your head. Not me. <laughs> You're going to lose yours. No. No. Oh. Hey, this time, Lieutenant, we got him. Got who? The perpetrator, the headhunter, the guy... The okay, guy okay, something... I know who you're talking about. Now, what do you mean? Well, with the, the body we pulled out this morning, we got a fingerprint match, eh? <laughs> Here she is. Name's Frosty Henderson. She's a prosy. Well, stop. Now, wait a minute. You don't know the rest. I pinned down a duke, a real fancy man, and I get the word from him she was posing last night for some artist name of Hugo Mintner. I got his address right here. Tony, you're going to make second grade for this. We going to pick him up right now? With one stop on the way for a warrant. Just a minute. I'm coming. Oh, who, 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 who is it? It's you, Auntie. Oh, goodness me. So early in the week. Just a minute, dear. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, dear, but... One can't be too careful these days about opening... Oh, oh dear me, not another one, Hugo. I'm afraid so, Archie. But you just buried the... Oh, look out the rosebud. Close the door before he gets... Oh, now, he's gone. Hugo, you'll just have to go after him and catch him. But, Archie, I can't... If you expect me to help take care of your pet, you'll have to help me with mine. Now, I'll just take the carrier and you go bring back Rosebud. <laughs> Well, he isn't any worse than the apartment. He's taking a powder for sure. Oh, um, no. We can't be this close and let him get away. And you learn anything more from the super? No, but this is our man, all right. Look. Hey, yeah. How about those chicks, huh? Concentrate on the faces. The one where the paint's still wet, that's Flossie, all right. Yeah. And I recognize at least two of the others from photos in the file. Real lifelike, ain't it? On the canvas, maybe. They were dead enough when we hauled them out of the river. Hello, headquarters, Lieutenant Flag, 43rd Precinct. I want an APB on the wire immediately for a Hugo Mintner. Male, Caucasian, height 5'6", slight build, mouse brown hair, blue eyes, weight 150. Warn all arresting officers this man is a dangerous maniac and should be approached with extreme caution. You ought to get rid of that cat. He's dangerous, Auntie. He bit me. I'm not surprised under the circumstances. What circumstances? I am very displeased with you, Hugo. I might even say shocked. While you were gone, I looked into this. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. Nonsense. It's my cat carrier that I lent you. But certainly not for transporting foreign objects. And worse still, to, to think that you planted them in my rose garden. You shouldn't have looked into it. Now, now I'm going to have to kill you. Nonsense. There's been quite enough of that already. Well, what, what am I going to do? We are going to sit down and have a nice long talk so that I can find out what this is all about. And I really didn't mean any harm, Auntie. It, it just came over me in waves, like... And, and I felt I, I had a mission. I had a call to save these women from themselves, to lift them up and wash them clean, make sure they would be, be saved forever from the burning fires of hell. So sensitive. You always were. Such a romantic. Tilting at windmills like Don Quixote. Pure in heart. If not exactly, indeed. But what am I going to do now? Oh, well, that's perfectly simple. You're going to march right over to the police and make your confession. Oh, no. No, they won't listen to me. They never do. That's, that's what started it, sort of, in the beginning. They won't listen to my complaints. Well, perhaps now that the shoe is on the other foot, you'll get a little more attention. Take this box with you and hurry along. I don't like to think of you getting caught in the rush hour. 
Without a picture, there isn't much hope for the APB, but with the apartment staked out, we... Well, 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 look who's here. You have another complaint, citizen? Well, not exactly. Do it's me a more... favor. Don't burden me. I got a lot on my mind. So have I. And I want to get it off. Look, uh, what was your name again? Hugo uh, Mintner. And I, well, I want to show you something. I am telling you that I haven't got the time. Hugo Mintner? I knew that name was familiar. You're Hugo Mintner? That's right. And what was it you wanted to complain about this time? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. If you just listen. Oh, I'm going to listen, all right. Well, that's better. I want to confess a crime. Several, in fact. Five, to be precise. My aunt said I ought to come in and tell you I've been a very naughty boy. I'm really quite happy here. The food is passable, and they leave me alone, which I like. Of course, they don't allow me models but I've taken up finger painting and I'm getting very, very good at abstractions. The only thing I really miss is my Friday visits to Aunt Minerva. You know, I, I wonder if she misses me. I got the cards, Minerva. In a minute, Bernice. What are you looking at out the window? Uh, nothing, really. It's Hugo. You miss him. Just on Fridays. How is it with him up on that uh, farm there? Uh, he, he seems quite happy. He writes very sweet letters. That's nice. Well, let's play. Now, what are you staring at? Oh, I was just looking at your rose garden. God forbid I should mention it, but I never saw roses more beautiful... You don't suppose... Bernice, shut up and deal. Of course, Hugo was stark, staring mad. But, as he said, he meant well. It just seems a pity that he wasn't the only one to lose his head. I'll be back shortly. Hi, this is Debbie Reynolds asking you to do something about guarding your life. If you were to ask me to name all seven of cancer's warning signals, I'd probably leave out one or two. But if one were to happen to me, like an obvious change in a wart or mole, I'd be sure to see the doctor. Let me suggest that you learn how to recognize these warning signals, too. Or better still, why don't you get in touch with your American Cancer Society for a free pamphlet that lists the signals, and then keep it on hand for reference. Remember, today there's often a lot we can do if cancer should strike. In fact, in most instances, the disease can be cured if it's detected and treated in time. I'd like it much better if I could say it could always be cured or prevented. That day will come, perhaps in our lifetime. It's up to all of us to help make it happen. Help by supporting your American Cancer Society. Give generously when your volunteer calls on you. We want to wipe out cancer in your lifetime, so be sure your American Cancer Society gift is a generous one. While of dubious artistic value, due to the unavoidable publicity over the case, fetched an amazing price at auction. Aunt Minerva's first notion was to divide the money five ways and make some restitution to the girl's nearest relatives. But uh, since the only claimants were some rather fancy gentlemen who all drove lilac or champagne luxury cars, she changed her mind and endowed a shelter for homeless cats. The animal variety, that is. Our cast included Robert Morse, Bryna Rayburn, E.V. Juster, Jackson Beck, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Oh, what a point! Keep your voice down, Ron! Ran, you're soaked to the skin, drenched. I pretended I wanted to heat up the coffee, but I really wanted to get to you. I went out the kitchen door and came around to this window. Ronnie, what's the trouble? He's holding me for ransom. 
Ransom. He wants $100,000. $100,000? 100, My father is Garrett Prentice, the millionaire. Oh, I've heard of him, yes. Phil Carrington, if that's his name, phoned my father yesterday. The money is on the way, but what worries me is I'm sure Carrington's going to kill me once he gets it. But if he gets the ransom money... I don't think it'll make any difference. He knows I can identify him, so he hasn't much choice. He has to kill me. You and your husband, too. Yes. We could identify him. You've got to do something. We've got to do something. But what? Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>